Let's talk about garment patterns because they are the very first thing you are going to look at when you decide that you want to make yourself something and it's really exciting. I love looking at patterns in books, in shops and also online because there's such a big range, more than ever. And in front of me, you can see I've got a little range. I've chosen six patterns just from my personal collection, but I've chosen six different manufacturers and some of them you may be familiar with so there is a McCall's, there's a Simplicity, there is a Vogue. They are the big pattern making companies and they've been around for years. So if you've ever made a garment, you will surely have looked at those. But we do these days have a lot more individual and smaller companies. So there's one here called Quick Sew, which is exactly what it is. It's a kind of entry level, get something made quickly. Birda has been on the go for a long time. But I've got one here, which is made by Maven, who is a much smaller individual um, pattern maker making company. So there's a huge range to choose from. Uh, actually, one that I've got here dates from 1972. So I'm going to, to look at classic, not vintage patterns, but you know, you find this type of thing often in thrift shops for very little money and I always really like them. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at one of the patterns. So I've decided I'm going to make a skirt. So I'm looking through the skirt section in the pattern book or online and you already know what suits you in terms of style, whether you like a fuller skirt, flared, straight, you already know that. So you're picking what you think you'll enjoy making and what you think you're going to look good in. And so you are obviously just choosing by the image on the front of the pattern. And I think that is really valuable information, but I actually really like, I'm just making sure I'm getting this the right way around, the little line drawing that you get on the back of all patterns, because that gives me far more information than the photograph on the front. I can see all the construction lines. I can see what type of pocket there is. I can see where the darts are, whether there's a split in the back. And that really helps me make decisions about, oh, well, yeah, I like that idea. Uh, yes, I quite like to sew that or, oh no, that looks really complex. I don't want to do that with this particular skirt. I want to be wearing it, you know, in two days time. So do have a look at that piece of information because that really helps you choose the pattern according to the construction. Now, once you've chosen your pattern, you want to be absolutely sure that you buy a pattern of the correct size. And that might seem really, really obvious, but commercial patterns do not correspond in their sizing to bought ready to wear garments. They are totally different. And it's where I think it goes wrong because people think, oh, I am a UK size 12. That's what, what size I buy. I get a size 12 pattern but you don't. Okay, now I'm just talking UK sizes here, um, but it, the information is kind of the same. You need to check it all out, whether you are in Europe or in America, whatever. So let's have a look at the information on the flap of the envelope about sizing. So we're going to think about a size 12 person. That's a size 12 ready to wear and a 30 inch waist and a 40 inch hip. So what I want to look at here is the size that gives me that 30 inch waist and that 40 inch hip and that is the size 16 and so that is the size that I want to buy. Must make sure I get the correct size pattern. Okay so we have chosen our design and we know which size pattern we want to buy but we also have a lot more information on here and it's going to tell us what type of fabric is suggested for this garment. So I'm just going to have a look and it says broadcloth, gabardine, poplin, wool crepe, lightweight wool and linen blends. So something that has a little bit of substance to it, not too thin because if you made it from a very thin fabric, every time you sat down, it would be really creased. It's actually, I think, why it says linen blends and not linen. Linen blended with something else is going to crease less than 100% linen. So something with a little bit of substance, not too lightweight and certainly not too heavy in the middle range there. Okay, so it's giving you some ideas of the fabrics and it also tells you 
how much fabric you need for your particular size according to the width of fabric that you choose because fabric is made and sold in different widths. So if we look at our size, which is the size 16 and it's a 45 inch wide, actually this pattern is only in imperial, it is not in metric, so it's not going to give me metres or centimetres. So if your fabric was 45 inches wide, you would need a yard and a half. And if it was 60 inches wide, which is much wider, you would need a yard and one eighth. So not only does it tell you what you need in terms of the type of fabric you're looking for, it tells you how much you need. The other information that you also want to gain from the back of the pattern is whether you need interfacing or not. And the interfacing is in a little section of its own and it tells you how much interfacing you need to buy by the yard in the case of this pattern and then the notions and the notions are all the extra bits like buttons, zippers, seam binding, thread, all of those kinds of things. So everything that you need to know about purchasing the fabric for this skirt is on the back of the envelope. So hopefully all of that makes sense to you. Now let's have a look on the inside. So inside the pattern envelope will be the instruction sheet or sheets and a, a nice folded wadge of the actual pattern. So let's look at the instruction sheets first. And the first thing I do is have a look at how many sheets there are. And this says one, page one of three. So I know that I'm gonna have page one on the reverse, page two and a third page. Actually, in the case of this particular pattern, the third page is in Spanish um, and I don't actually need that, but I do have Spanish nieces, so I'll keep that in case they ever wanted to make this um, particular skirt. What I always do as soon as I get the pattern in my sort of hot, sweaty, little eager hands is I read through the instruction sheets. I love them. They are like a wonderful novel to me. They teach me so much and I just, just kind of drink it all in really. But on all of them, you should have a lot of information here about the actual pattern, the grain line, all the symbols, little things about doing alterations. You know, if you're very tall, how you kind of split the pattern and put some in. So do read all of that. That becomes second nature. And when you've done a lot of work, this is kind of the same thing repeated with every pattern but certainly as sort of beginners that is really really valuable so again I've got my line drawings here and the views different views there I already know which one I've decided I'm going to do um, and then the next thing is it explains all of the pattern pieces and if you've got a pattern with several views in it you know different versions of a similar thing you probably don't need all the pattern pieces so you could decide you could have a look and say right for the view that I'm doing the version that I'm doing I need this piece this piece and this piece and with a pencil you could just tick off the ones that you actually need now what you've got here is the layout and it's showing you what the pattern manufacturer considers is the most e economical layout for cutting out your garment, your skirt, depending on the width of fabric that you have bought. Now, I have to say to you that when I first started making garments as a young teenager and I had very little money, I always used to buy the pattern first and take it home and mark out on the table the various widths of fabric. Um, so, you know, it would be 91 centimetres, 112 centimetres, and I would lay the pattern out and see what the usage was because quite often I would be able to get the actual garment out of less fabric than was suggested here, but that's not always the case. But if you are short of fabric or short of cash, or you just want to be very economical, you can do that. Okay, so it explains the layout and I'm not gonna really deal with that at the moment, but what I then do is I turn it over and I read 
the whole thing through so that I understand the process that I'm going through. And quite often, it can be quite difficult on some complex things to actually visualize what you're doing. I don't panic about that. I never did and sort of said, oh, I can't do that, this is too hard. Or just very carefully read it through again and read it through in succession so that I really understood. And I think so much of your learning takes place actually on this sheet here within this page is just so valuable. It is not the only way and as we go through the classes you will see that I will do things differently in a different order and in different ways to how the patterns do them because I was trained and I worked in industry and have a lot of experience. So really what I'm saying there is you know this is not the only way and sometimes it's not the best way so you don't have to stick, stick slavishly to what is actually said here but really you want to have a good understanding of what is going to happen in the making process before you begin. Often when I'm teaching in a classroom situation, perhaps I'm teaching a residential course and a lady will say, oh, I'd like to come and make a jacket or a dress or something like that. And I'll say, yeah, that'd be great. We'll do that. And they'll go and buy their pattern and their fabric and they won't have looked at it before doing anything else. And they'll just kind of present it to me as if I'm going to make it. And yeah, I mean, I can tell you all of that stuff. But if you know all of this first, if you've really explored it, you're going to be so much better able to make your garment than if you just haven't really studied it. So study it. Now let's look at the tissue part of the pattern. Now this skirt, I have already made it a couple of times, so the pattern's already cut out. So I'm just going to show you the pattern from this dress because I haven't um, yet made it. So you will get these very large, generally, sheets and you will need to open them out. Some people, I think, iron them, but I, I don't bother with that. I just smooth them out. Now, I already know which pattern pieces I'm looking for because I've studied that on my instruction sheet. So I will just very roughly chop out all of the pieces that I need and then I very carefully fold up the bits that I'm not going to use and put them back in the envelope. Now I would just chop out roughly but you can see on this particular pattern that there are three different sizes so I need to be sure that I'm going to choose the correct size and that's a little thing that I did want to actually mention to you. Um, if I just grab uh, where is it? This one, for example. Patterns used to be sold in individual sizes. And so when I was making garments in the 70s and sort of beginning on all of this, you only bought patterns. They were only in one size. And this particular one is a size 12 with a 26 and a half inch waist. And that is all that is in there. So it was really, really quite simple. Now, the one that I've just showed you has three sizes in. So it's not too hard. That's fine. But this Burda one has has eight different sizes all printed next to each other, kind of one, two, three, all in the same piece. And so if you struggle a little bit to kind of see which one you're going for, the fewer sizes that are included in that pattern, the easier it is. So that might be just something that you want to bear in mind when you are looking at patterns and perhaps choosing between different um, manufacturers. So back to the skirt and the pieces that you need. So these, as I say, have been um, cut out because I have made the skirt, but I just want to show you what the various things are. So on the skirt here, you can see it's cut out, but it's got a grain line here. Can you see this little line here? And it's got an arrow here and here. That symbol, and it explains this on the instruction sheet, is to go to a fold because this is the skirt front and it doesn't have a seam down the middle. So that goes on the fold. That's very important when you are positioning this on your fabric. And when you are folding your fabric in half, you want to make sure that the fold is running with the straight grain. You don't want to place this edge, the center of the garment on a fold and the fold is slightly off grain. So that explains the positioning there. Can you see this little arrow here? This is to say that if you're not very tall, you're quite petite and you want to reduce some 
length there you can fold out and um, if you see there's one here and one here it gives you two places to fold out if you're very tall that's where you slash and you add a strip in so that explains that um, what you can see here is the dart and that is going to be sewn to shape into the waist and these little circular marks here are for tailor's tacks now we will do tailor's tacks in the class but they are thread markings to show you how to fold the garment where to fold it and where to stitch so that is important information and shouldn't be ignored and also here is the notch there's a double notch there and that will correspond to exactly the same type of notch two little kind of it looks like a w there two v's or a w will be exactly the same on the adjoining piece and it shows you where to line up and match it so that you don't kind of mismatch the seam can you see on my paper pattern there that i have cut that out i never cut it in because if you want to make any alterations and let the, th the thing out a little bit if you have cut that in, you limit the amount that you have got to play with. And some people do cut them in, and I think it's a mistake, always cut them out. So I'm just skimming through this. There is the waistline mark because this is a high-waisted um, skirt and it gives you the suggested lengths for the different versions of this skirt. Now you would always check that against yourself as where you wanted to go because you know one person's knee length skirt is not another person's knee length skirt. But those are the major um, pieces of information on the pattern that you need to be really aware of when you are actually coming to pin your pattern onto your garment. And the grain line, I'm just going to find um, a bigger piece. I'm just going to find the back because the back um, is not likely to be on a fold. Let's have a look. No, the back is not on a fold. So, sorry, I'm making it look very messy on here. But here is the corresponding piece that fits to the front. And can you see the grain line running down there? And there is a centre back seam here is a little opening split there there's that double notch that matches to the one that i showed you on the front there is the back door so similar information but the difference in this between this and the front is that the grain line does not have that little pointed to a fold thing it is just on the straight grain there so that's what you are going to see on the pattern as you are looking at further information to help you with the construction. So before I finish just chatting about patterns, there is just one more thing that I want to say. I do hope that gives you a really good kind of little overview to help you. But this particular pattern is for knitted fabrics and not for woven. So when you are choosing your pattern, make sure that if you want to sew a knitted fabric garment, you choose a correct fabric for knits and vice versa. You will not be able to make make this particular design in a woven fabric it will not fit and if you are going to sew with knits have a look on the back here because there is a little sort of gauge here and it's to help you when you're choosing your fabric that when the fabric is relaxed it is just that amount there you just hold that amount of fabric against this particular marker here Keep hold of it at one end and stretch it and you should be able to stretch it so that it reaches that further little arrow there. It needs to have that amount of stretch in it or more in order that the pattern will work and fit. If it's a knitted fabric that has very little stretch in it and you can't stretch holding it here from this little arrow to this arrow here, it's going to be pretty snug. So do use that piece of information when you are choosing fabrics for knitted garments. So for today, that's all I'm going to say on choosing patterns and learning the information that is there for you.